Uh, this is Rostow. Uh, basically, he came up with these five stages. Uh, I'll go through them quickly because he won't show up on the exam, but it's important to know. Uh, no one's in the traditional society. Well, maybe some really poor African countries. Basically, everybody's agricultural based, barter based, trade based. Uh, this next stage, preconditions for takeoff. You basically, you're, you're getting diffused with new technology, particularly infrastructure technology. So sanitation, roads and things like that are being uh, built. Uh, it's usually an educated few people to get these uh, things started for them. Um, but the new technology they're referring to is the basics. Uh, because you need roads, you need rail, you need harbors, uh, things like that to even for to get into the next stage. Uh, and so the next stage is takeoff, uh, growth in small areas, so textiles. Uh, remember, that's making products. So basically, your factories are now up and running. Uh, they have infrastructure to move products around within the country. Um, you know, some of your Asian countries are in that stage right now. They're, they're manufacturing things, Vietnam, Indonesia, places like that that are making their T-shirts and shoes and whatnot. Uh, drive to maturity would kind of be your semi-periphery countries. Uh, the tech has now reached all areas. We're getting more skilled jobs. Uh, you're not making T-shirts anymore. You're making more electronic type products. You're making phones and TVs and washing machines and car parts and things like that. And so that's kind of like uh, China, Mexico, uh, countries in that developing region. Uh, and then obviously the, the last stage where you run into problems too with this is uh, what we're seeing right now with our economy, we're basically a consumer economy. Well, as we're seeing with um, our current situation, when your entire economy is mass consumption, but people are allowed to leave the house and buy cars and washing machines and things like that, uh, that's when you begin to see the problems that we're in right now uh, because you're stuck in this consumption uh, mode, unfortunately. Things will probably turn around over the summer, of course, once they get things opened up again. Uh, there are different ways to get countries to become more developed. One way is self-sufficiency, uh, basically where you keep everything in-house. So let's say, uh, for example, you're a country that maybe has a resource like, I don't know, copper or gold or oil or something like that. You try and keep all that in-house. You try to, you don't know, export it, you don't know, trade it. Um, the problem is, you, you, it's hard to get rich if none of those products leave your country. Not, keeping everything in your country is not the most logical way to do it because we're a global economy now. You need to deal with the outside world. And so the, the preferred method to become a more developed country is use international trade. Uh, South Korea, Singapore, Taiwan, Hong Kong, those, those Asian countries, you know, Vietnam is obviously coming on board with, more with that. Uh, Indonesia, uh, Bangladesh, and slightly. Uh, the OPEC countries, those are your oil traders, uh, you know, in the Middle East, uh, Venezuela is an OPEC, um, you know, sell to the outside world and use that money. Unfortunately, uh, when you are one of those international trade countries, as you can see on the graph there, development does improve for India. But what happens is a lot of that money tends to fall into the hands of a select few uh, and they don't spread the money around. And so it's kind of a tricky prospect. You've got, you've got to make sure that money is coming in from oil uh, is meeting, meeting all sectors of your economy, but oftentimes it's not. Uh, we're kind of seeing this right now, and this is why I wanted to make sure we got to this. <clears throat> um, we're seeing what to do during difficult times and recessions and depressions. We saw it in Europe in 2008 and nine. Uh, we're going to see it again, obviously, here in the United States. Um, right now, we're using the first bullet there. We're stimulating the economy. Um, we're giving money to people. I know I got my uh, direct deposit from the government a couple weeks ago. Your parents probably did too. Uh, that's the <clears throat> method they're using right now. But what was happening in Europe was austerity, which means they were cutting things. <clears throat> and in countries in Europe, they're mostly um, you know, socialist countries that have socialized medicine, uh, socialized pension plans and retirement plans and education, they started cutting back on some of those things during the recession had to save money. Uh, and so it's, it's a tricky prospect because obviously if you 
spend too much money like the government is right now in the trillions of dollars, you start going into debt. Europe's model was, well, we don't want to go into debt, so we're going to cut programs and save money. Uh, obviously, if you're reliant on healthcare in a European country, uh, obviously you don't want the austerity programs. Since we've already used stimulus, it'd be interesting to see what happens over the summer, uh, whether we keep stimulating people with cash infusions or we move to the second step there and start cutting programs. Um, but I'm not in government, so that's not really my call. Uh, the last key issue, why are our countries making progress in development? Obviously, this is the last part. Uh, fair trade is basically where you are making a conscious effort to buy a product where the company has agreed to pay their workers a fair and living wage. Uh, a lot of times there'll be a logo on the product. Um, so it might be a little bit more expensive, but you know that coffee maker or that t-shirt company or a shoe company uh, paid their workers in India or Bangladesh or wherever the shoes are coming from or coffee is coming from a fair living wage. Um, it gives them more rights. It gives them opportunities to join unions. It gives them opportunities to maybe get access to health care, things like that. Uh, and then finally, there's uh, consumers. We have co cooperative stores where basically you are sharing in what is sold and bought at the store with <clears throat> the community. Uh, you don't see those as much. There are a lot in the West Coast, but not, uh, I can't think of any here in Utah off the top of my head. There might be down Salt Lake, but um, really what we try to do is use fair trade. We're now we're in a globalized economy now, right? We're trying to treat those workers a little bit more fairly. And now that we've started doing that, you can kind of see changes in development. Uh, the developing countries are in the green there, and they've slowly caught up, slowly, uh, to developed countries. Um, that closing that gap slightly. Uh, if we could use more fair trade, maybe that gap will shrink some more. Uh, and then life expectancy, obviously, that's the fusion of medical technology and medicines and so forth. Uh, as we can see in the last 20, 30, 40, 50 years, uh, that gap is significantly closed in life expectancy. Again, that's because we're beginning to share more of our technology with them. All right, any questions on any of that stuff? If I go too fast? Okay. Uh, true or false? GDP per capita is the only economic indicator that can reliably determine the level of development for a country. True or false? No. False. 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 Yeah. False. Remember, we, we look at life expectancy and we look at education, right? Share of GDP in the secondary sector is now larger in LDCs than MDCs. True. 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 False. Yes. True. True. Yeah. That's remember the secondary sector are your manufacturing jobs. And that's they're the periphery countries, right? China and so forth. They're making all the stuff for the MDCs. Uh, gross mass of product measures the distribution of wealth in a country. False. 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 Yeah. Development is a completely understood process involving concrete yet difficult steps. False. 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 Yeah, I mean, it seems simple, but every country is different, right? And that's what they're referring to there. You know, every country has got different products to sell and so forth. So it's kind of it's not as concrete and simple as everybody thinks. Uh, the dependency ratio is much higher in more developed countries. False. False. True. 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 Yeah, I'm hearing some true, true. then false. True. false. Here's why it's false. false. I, and I know why some of you are saying true, uh, because of the aging population like in Europe, right? And yeah, there might be a lot of old people in Germany or whatever, but are, are they still going to outnumber the number of kids they're having in Nigeria? No, remember dependency ratio is also the kids below 15 added together with the adults 65 and over. And so, yeah, there's so many kids in those undeveloped countries. Um, they're gonna have higher dependency ratios. Uh, GDP per capita is more meaningful measure of development than gross domestic product alone. True. True, true. Really true. Very good. Yeah, but that's per person, how much money each person is making, right? Uh, raising the GDP of a country means an an automatically higher standard of living for workers. False. 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 
Yeah. As we, as we see, a lot of times that money is going to Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates and not everybody at the bottom, right? Uh, the three large relatively developed regions in the world are North America, Western Europe, and Eastern Europe. False. Eastern False. Europe is not. False. 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 Australia. Australia. It's, it's true. Europe? Um, Eastern Europe is developed. They yeah, may be at the low end of the scale, but um, and it's saying three large. I don't know. I guess Australia is large, but Australia. Yeah, that's kind of, that's not the best question in the world. Include all of those like little like micro. I feel like Japan would be ahead of them. Micronesia, Polynesia, and Melanesia, and like all of those are like, like, don't they hurt? Australia's like development, like if we are looking at the whole like area as a region. Yeah, if you look at it as Oceania instead of just Australia, yeah, it would drag them down. You're right. Yeah. Uh, gender inequality exists in every country of the world. True. 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 Uh, developing countries are increasingly pursuing the international trade approach to development. True. 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 They can use self-sufficiency, but it's not recommended, right? Uh, India and China are examples of countries which have pursued the self-sufficiency alternative to development. True. 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 Yeah, they oh. tried it. Doesn't mean they're doing it now. It just says, oh. you know, they pursued it at one time. Yeah, they tried it. Uh, the availability of energy and other resources is linked to the level of development. True. Yeah. That's a good question. True. That is true. true. Um, obviously, if you want to move from agriculture into secondary jobs, those are factories, and obviously factories need energy and power. Um, and as people have more access to electricity, they can start buying washing machines and things like that, right? So yeah, you need resources. Uh, North America displays more cultural homogeny than other more developed countries. False. 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 Oh, so. Whoa. Whoa. Actually, I'm not sure about that one. Really? Because the Americas um, are. Me I thought either. we have like a bunch of different people here. Yeah, I'm. I'm going to disagree with that one. I'm going to take that question out because if we just went to Germany, most people are just Mexico, Guatemala, German, and Caucasian. So. White with blonde hair and blue. I mean, I guess like yeah. Canada is very homogenous, but other than that, like no, but like North America also includes like La like Central America, like El Salvador, Honduras. Yeah, and uh -huh. you can't stereotype all of those countries and say they're the same. Yeah, uh, all that's just a bad question. Let's move on. Uh, the Middle East and Latin America are less developed regions with the most favorable balance between population and resources. True. 